Oprah, it's great to talk with you. Thank you for your time. How are you feeling? Feeling good. A little laggy, but really exhilarated. Okay, good. I just want to make sure. You know how journos often get asked, you know, what's your wish list of people that you want to interview? Oprah was always the top of my list. Oprah. I said in the beginning of the very first show, I want other people who are watching to know that whatever you're going through, you are not alone. I sort of watched her rise from Australia, and I, and I watched this woman, and America, when she was coming through the ranks, American television was the province of tiny blonde women. They were ruling American television, and here was Oprah, who was not blonde and not tiny, and she just never took a step back. I think she just took herself right out to the suburbs and said, here I am. I hear you, I see you, I am you. Come and spend some time with me. I think that was how it worked for her. Look at you, Australia! For 25 years, she was a daily fixture in homes around the world. I'm Oprah Winfrey. Women and men would switch on for their hourly fix I was getting ready to be called onto the set. She was uh, talking to somebody else. And a few minutes later, she, the door opens and there's Oprah. And she's come into the, the little dressing room, green room that I'd been sort of um, allocated. And she said, hi, you know, we're talking, we're about to talk. And, you know, I just want to see that you're okay. If you've got everything you need. And I thought, oh, God bless you. Oprah's come to say hello to me. I didn't feel like I was in a production line of people who were interviewing her that day, even though I was. There never was a strategy. There never was a vision for, oh gee, I could, should be this kind of person mm. or that kind of person. No style, no nothing. I mean, nothing other than my personality and my desire to sit in the chair and ask questions and listen to the answers. If you agree to be interviewed by Oprah, you're not gonna be challenged. That's not her way. She'll make it easy for you to talk. She'll make it easy for you to confess. She'll, you know, confess a little something about herself or she'll be a bit surprised about something that you say and she'll prompt you to say something more, but she really won't challenge you or push back. So that's probably why she would be the person of choice and still is the person of choice for most people. Journos tend to push back a little bit. Journos tend to challenge you sometimes. Um, and the people who don't really want to be challenged and who don't really want to be, you know, led to talk about things that they don't want to talk about, of course they're going to go to Oprah. They're going to get a massive audience and they're going to get a really sympathetic ear. Oprah Winfrey now dominates the talk show circuit, both in the ratings and popularity. You've talked about you're still striving to live your best life. Oh, I am. Given what you've achieved, uh, I mean, You've achieved phenomenal well, I, things. I will tell you this, Trace. I will have to say that I do live a pretty extraordinary life, but not for the reasons that most people would think. There is a peace and a contentment and a real joy that has absolutely nothing to do with the square footage that I have or the car that I drive. I just got a new Tesla. It has nothing to do with that. Uh, the things that I have acquired, but it comes from being fully present with myself in this life. I think quitting the show was probably the hardest decision she'd ever made in her life because it was part of her life. I don't think she wanted to stay too long at the party. Uh, and I think that's something that, you know, most people go through no matter what is their line of work. If you've been really good at something, you might be tempted to stay there forever and ever because it's comfortable and you're good at it and it's worked. But at some point, you know, maybe that's gonna turn. And I think she wanted to finish on top and she did. I used to be ashamed, embarrassed, and put off by the notion that somebody would say, oh, um, she's so full of herself. I think you call it high poppy syndrome. Tall puppy. Tall puppy. Yeah. Tall puppy. I, I, I used to be put off by being called a tall puppy and now, I am a very bright, tall puppy. <laughs> I was really pleased. I was so pleased that I, I met her. I was pleased with how it went. I, um, I, I found her really generous 
And, uh, you know, I gave her a gift. I gave her a Camilla caftan because she'd worn Camilla the previous time she was here. <laughs> the fabulous Camilla. One of the best parts of Australia. And it's going to be hot oh when you my. come. Oh, my. Camilla, you shouldn't have, but thanks. That's great. You shouldn't have, girl, you shouldn't have. I was worried about what to pack. And now, look, look what I just manifested. <laughs> Oprah would get so much free stuff, you can imagine. She would be bombarded with free stuff. She acted like it was the only present she'd ever been given. So there is a generosity of spirit. Now you can call it performance if you like. Maybe she, maybe she was performing, but she didn't have to. She didn't have to perform for me. She'd already given me an interview. She'd showed up. I mean, all she did was show up. And so that was all she had to do. So everything else was a generosity of spirit that um, was really lovely to be around. Oh and arrives. Thank you, It's Tracy. been so nice to meet you. Nice Thank to you, meet you. Will I see you there? You, I hope so. That would be great. I'd okay. love to see you in great. Australia. Great to see you.